Waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the up it earlier at about 7 a.m. A group from the Coast Guard. Welcome to Hashtag VH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, Malaysia says new satellite images provide a credible lead in the search for the missing plane. Uh, the point here is that. Uh, Whenever you try to uh, magnify a person or look at a person under a microscope, you will always see the imperfections. The lawyer of Fort Barrel scam bagman Ruby Twazon says the credibility of a witness does not depend on a spotless record. And a company tapped to deliver gun licenses ends its deal with the Philippine National Police following controversy. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. A new lead on the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 surfaces Thursday. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott says there's new and credible information suggesting the missing plane might be close to Australia. Abbott says two objects possibly related to MH370 were sighted from satellite images. Surveillance planes scour the southern part of the Indian Ocean, 3,000 kilometers off the western coast of Australia. On, in a press conference Thursday, Malaysia says the satellite images are a credible lead but have yet to be confirmed. Transport Minister Hisham Mudin Hussein says search operations will continue. He adds, for families around the world, the one piece of information they want most is the information we just don't have, the location of MH370. But the find comes as a potential breakthrough in the nearly two-week search for the aircraft and its 239 passengers and crew. The search encountered a few false alarms, including Chinese satellite images of suspected debris and oil spills off the coast of Vietnam. MH370 vanished in the early hours of March 8 after veering drastically off course over the South China Sea while en route to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur. Two of the witnesses in one of the biggest corruption scandals in the country face questions about their credibility. Lawyer Dennis Manalo, who represents pork barrel scam bagman Ruby Tuazon, says her testimony is crucial. He says Tuazon provides direct and personal knowledge of delivering kickbacks to top lawmakers. Mrs. Tuazon's testimony is also uh, critical because um, she establishes direct evidence on the personal delivery of funds mm -hmm. to Senator Estrada, to the chief of staff of Senator Juan Ponce in Rile. Mm -hmm. That is exactly where the materiality of Mrs. Tuason's testimony will come in. Mm -hmm. Because according to Mrs. Tuason, Senator Enrile appeared in a very private moment, which is uh, having lunch and coffee in a uh, restaurant yeah, this is yeah. no longer just a uh, this is no longer an official mm -hmm. uh, meeting this uh, now becomes a personal meeting and what would senator in really be doing in that kind of uh, uh, moment or activity and uh, mrs twason was uh, uh, clear in her testimony that that meeting was precisely to deliver money Manalo tries to justify the different approaches Senators Jingoy Estrada and Juan Ponce Enrile allegedly used in the scam. While Tuason was able to establish a direct link to Estrada, it was a different case for Enrile. It's different strokes for different folks. Meaning? Meaning that uh, Senator Estrada has his own way of uh, dealing with Mrs. Tuason. Meaning that for Senator Estrada, uh, he chose to direct uh, to deal directly with Mrs. Tuason by receiving the money himself. With regard to Senator Enrile, uh, he decided to use the hierarchy in his office. So he was a lot more careful. Uh, I guess he wanted to uh, use what is called uh, in uh, criminal uh, litigation as layering. Um, 
you would not be directly receiving money from uh, a uh, conduit, but you will ask another person to do it for you. Manalo says the witness's credibility does not depend on how spotless he or she is on record. He also says that while the rule of law holds, public clamor dictates political processes. Whenever you try to uh, magnify a person or look at a person under a microscope, you will always see the imperfections. If you will say that uh, we will only accept witnesses who, who uh, look pretty and uh, handsome under the microscope, then wala nang papasang testigo because nobody looks pretty or handsome under the microscope. Kung ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is the delivery of the money, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, attack on the person's credibility must be on uh, the falsity of that delivery, mm -hmm. not on any other aspect of her life like, uh, like the alleged undervaluing of the sale of her property. Manalo echoes legal analysts saying the case will drag on for years. The fastest would probably be three years. That's the fastest. Well, if you will look at trials in other countries, trials abroad, mm -hmm. you will notice that they're, they're, they're quite particular with, uh, they're strict with the presentation of evidence. Once they fix a date, you cannot move that without any, uh, you know, a life and death reason. Senator Jingoy Estrada says critics cannot rule him out in the 2016 polls despite being linked to the pork barrel scam. Estrada says he has yet to decide on his 2016 plans but adds he still has the mass support and machinery for a possible vice presidential bid. The senator says he tested the waters by visiting several provinces. Estrada says while he had to explain his alleged involvement in the scam, he was not ostracized in his visits. I'll, I'm not a hypocrite to tell you that I'm not affected by these uh, issues haunting me. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have to weigh everything. Well, I've been making the rounds already uh, all over the country. And the reception is still warm. The senator faces a plunder complaint for allegedly funneling his pork barrel funds to fake NGOs of mastermind Janet Limnapolis. He was initially reported to be the running mate of Vice President Jeju Marbinay, but observers say the scam dashed his political ambitions. Estrada says he will still run for vice president if Binay offers him to be his running mate. For our social media post of the day, netizens are skeptical about Senator Estrada's 2016 plans. Some ask whether he's still credible after he was implicated in the scam. Mark Badawan says, Will we vote for someone whose intentions are selfish and whose main aim is to ransack people's money? I guess we are not that foolish to be persuaded by these traditional politicians. Others doubt Estrada will win. Roberto Lastica says, let Jingoy try and run. It's the hubris of a man that consumes him. Humpty Dumpty's fall broke him to pieces. Justice Secretary Leila De Lima says journalists who accept public funds as bribes may be charged with offenses like direct bribery or malversation. The inquiry reported three media men received checks from the bank accounts of the National Agribusiness Corporation or NABCOR. The report named TV5 News anchor Erwin Tulfo, DZWB's Carmelo Del Prado Magdurulang, and a third unidentified journalist. The two reportedly received checks amounting to over 245,000 pesos each. NABCOR was used as a conduit of pork barrel funded projects of fake NGOs. De Lima says journalists who benefit Benefited from the pork barrel will be held liable because public funds are at stake even if they are private individuals. 
A career company tapped to deliver gun licenses to applicants ends its deal with the Philippine National Police or PNP after a news story linked its owner to PNP Chief Director General Alan Purisima. The Warefast Documentation Agency Incorporated decides not to renew its accreditation, which expires end of March. This comes a week after reports said the company was owned by a former superior of Purisima, retired civilian security group chief Ireno Bacolod. Under the PNP's new system that took effect early this year, licenses to possess firearms are delivered straight to the homes of applicants. Purisima says this aims to curb corruption in the Firearms and Explosives Office or FEO. But gun owners say where fast services were bad or non-existent, deliveries would come in late or would not come at all. The changes in the issuance of licenses came after the PNP discovered anomalies in the FEO. The Supreme Court allows the continuation of criminal proceedings against lawyer Alex Alvarez, a co-accused of arrested businessman Delphine Lee. On Wednesday, the court issues a temporary restraining order that negates the appellate court's junking of charges against Alvarez, a former foreclosure manager of the Home Development Mutual Fund or Pag-ibig Fund. Both Alvarez and Lee are accused of syndicated estafa for using ghost borrowers to obtain 6.6 .6 billion pesos in housing loans. The Department of Justice, or DOJ, filed criminal complaints against Lee, Alvarez, and three others in relation to the scam. The DOJ questioned before the High Court various rulings preventing the department from pursuing its case against the five alleged scammers. Lee was arrested on March 6. Power distributor Manila Electric Company or Meralco announces a huge cut in its January generation charge increase following a regulatory order voiding electricity spot market prices. The company says its recalculated generation charge is now 6 peso and 12 centavos per kilowatt hour in January, significantly lower than the 10 peso and 23 centavos per kilowatt hour it originally computed. With the recalculated rate, Meralco will now only recover 45 centavos per kilowatt hour from consumers. The ERC earlier voided electricity spot market prices for November and December, citing market failure. Ukraine announces plans to cut ties from a key post-Soviet alliance and to slap visas on Russians following the Kremlin's annexation of Crimea. The Ukrainian government is also preparing to evacuate its soldiers and their families from Russian, uh, from Russian occupied Crimea to the mainland. Pro Russian forces earlier seized two Crimean Navy bases and detained Ukraine's naval chief, who has since been released. The assault began when some 200 militants sawed through a fence and overran the base while Ukrainian servicemen barricaded themselves inside. The pullout is tantamount to surrender, even if the provisional government in Kiev insists Russia's annexation of Crimea is illegal. The spiraling crisis prompts the White House to warn Russia it is creating a dangerous situation. The commander of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, says Russia's seizure of Crimea is the gravest threat to European security and stability since the end of the Cold War. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 2. Angry relatives of the passengers of the missing Malaysia plane hit the government for giving conflicting messages. Distressed relatives tried to gatecrash Malaysia's daily media briefing on Wednesday, unfurling a protest banner that read, Give us back our families. In yet another twist in the plane mystery, authorities say investigators discovered that data were deleted from the home flight simulator of pilot Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah about a month before the plane vanished. It is not yet clear what this means. At number 7, farmers commit suicide in western India after freak hailstorms and rains destroyed winter crops worth millions of dollars. The unusual weather struck parts of western Maharashtra state from late February damaging fruits like grape, mango, papaya, lime, and watermelon. The opposition says the number of farmer suicides rises to 37 and demands that the natural disaster be declared a national calamity. 
And at number 10, in what could be the most expensive dog sale ever, a businessman buys a Tibetan Mastiff puppy for almost $2 million. The Mastiff, a prized status symbol among China's wealthy, was sold at a luxury pet fair in China. A property developer paid 12 million yuan for the one-year-old golden-haired Mastiff. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. Today's mood navigator has stories on companies, schools, and celebrities. Top 100 corporations, only 39 are on BIR taxpayers list, has 51% of readers feeling angry, 15% annoyed. Know the best schools for teachers in the Philippines, 66% happy, 17% inspired. But the story that got the most clicks is from entertainment. Engage, JC Intal proposes to Bianca Gonzalez at Naia, has 80% of readers feeling happy, 8% don't care. All contributing to the mood of the day today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, March 20th, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Ayi Makaregin, as you say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.